What's up, I'm Lucas and today checking out the ZOF575. After reviewing the Godox SL60W light before, I thought it would be interesting to um, look at another light which is kind of similar in, in specs and see how they perform. So this is the DOF LED 575 as you can read on the side here. Obviously this light also features a single light source and uh, as the same with the Godox you have the same performance of around 60 watts. So there are obviously a few differences between the DOF and the Godox and the first um, and foremost is the price because this is a lot cheaper. There are actually quite a few reasons why this light is so much cheaper and we will get to that in a minute but before let's have a look at the light itself. The light is really small and relatively light which I actually find quite cool. Um, obviously we can put it on a tripod, we have the screw here and we have the bigger wheel screw here not a level like on the Godex which I actually prefer and as you can see this runs smooth so we have no reset mount in this lamp which is also not something I would prefer I don't know if you can see this here we have like this folded metal outfolded metal and the screw here this is also again an umbrella mount it looks very flimsy and actually is however it's not really an issue and you can lose it really good with an umbrella even with really big umbrellas it works flawlessly but still it just looks a little bit dull this part and the front uh, are made of metal this part here in between and the back are made of plastic on the back we only have an on off switch um, we have a power connector. This LED will only show us that this LED light is on and we again have a dimmer so we can dim um, the light right away from the body which is quite cool. So there is no display on this lamp like with the Godox and also there is no remote so you cannot remote control this light. If this is a necessity to you um, this light is of course not that attractive. I don't find um, a remote that uh, much of a necessity but it's still nice to have still you don't have any with this light. What you might have guessed from this power connector is that we need a power brick like this. So basically one reason why this lamp is so small is because all the electronics, all um, the AC adapting is made in this block. So um, this is uh, for some people a real downer that you always need a big power brick to power your lamp. However, I find actually that this can be an advantage because that means that we can easily hook up batteries with this light. If you have powerful V mounts or racing packs that can draw that much power uh, constantly like 50 watts is a bit much for a v-mount and many cheaper ones won't deliver this but still if you have proper batteries you can power this light independent from any AC socket which is a pretty cool thing um, if you're on the go or out at night so this is something that you can't do with the Godox. Also pretty neat is that this is a locking connector so you can screw it tight. Um, lots of people don't like this because um, you always like if you pull the cable you will always <laughs> get down the whole lamp. However, in some situations this can be a real help and it's cool to have because you don't have to use it. Also ships with a really long AC cable, by the way. It's the same with the Godox, we get a big reflector um, that we can put in here. This is also a Bowens S type. Uh, one thing that is different from the Godox is it's, you know, it won't come off. It's good, well attached, it won't come off, but it's like, you know it's rattling so this is not like it, it does not make the best impression so mechanically it's not that great but you get this with it and you have um, the normal bones S mount to get um, some accessories like a beauty dish or a softbox or a reflector or whatever. So this is all there is to say about the appearance of this light and you can see mechanically and cosmetically it's always a bit cheaper it's just cheaper build than the um, than the Godex for example in comparison and um, sadly this is not where it stops where these lights differ in quality um, what we also have to talk about is the LED itself we get this little manual which is completely in Chinese so most things are stuff for guesswork uh, for me however it reads that this lamp has a CRI of uh, higher than 80 so it's not that much of a good light. So basically the color reproduction from this light is not that good. Compared to actual sunlight we can see this pretty well. That is not really matching. I mean the sun obviously doesn't ever have the same color temperature and so on but you can also see that the quality of light is just a tad different and it does not match as well as for example the Godox did before. 
Another rather cheap thing on this light is the fan. I mean, the fan on the Godox wasn't perfect, but at least it uh, was somehow usable. But in this light, it's really loud. So like, really loud. Another thing is that this fan doesn't even power down when we dim the light. It's always at full power and this is really not very pleasing. But before I talk this down too much, I have to admit that it's super easy and super cheap to actually switch out the fan inside this lamp. So we can make it a lot quieter uh, very easily. But this is a thing we will talk about in a different video. So the manual claims that this lamp has a color temperature of 5600 Kelvin plus minus 200 K which um, is a workable color temperature and a core um, output of 7560 lux. In theory, these values are pretty cool. However, um, I found something different when checking out the light. Without the reflector attached, we have the same image as with the Godox, that the light output is not as high, a bit lower than the Godox. But what really draws me away here is the color temperature, which is much cooler than it should be. So it's actually quite a bit off, like around 700 Kelvin, which is really something that is not okay. At least there are no big tins within this color temperature. This is um, one thing that is quite good. As soon as we pop on the reflector, the light dramatically increases. It hits not the same um, exposure that it should, uh, according to the manual, but still um, more than the Godox does with its reflector and um, still a lot of light, um, but still it does not really improve on the color temperature, which is a real issue. What's cool though is that we don't have any big color shifts when we dim the light up or down. What I did here is pop on a simple 1/8 CTO gel, so basically conversion gel. And with this we get a reasonable um, color temperature, um, which is much better for our usage. And um, of course it decreases the light output by around 1/8 of a stop but still more than the Godox puts out at um, full power with the reflector on. As manual also claims, this lamp dims from 0 to 100%. This is obviously 100%, but this is pretty clearly not zero. So this is again something that is somehow a lie. So the last thing we didn't talk about yet is flicker. And this is where this light really shines, and the pun is intended. So I'm a bit torn by this light because it's a really cheap one. It's a really cheap and usable light. I mean, I did not expect to have a really great color rendition from this light, but still it would be cool if it at least matched the, the color temperature that it meant. So basically this is a bit bad. I mean, I can always use the gels. It's only one, high, one eighth of a stop, so it's not too bad, but still it's some bit of a downer. So in the end, it's really hard to recommend this light because in the end, this manual um, and therefore the manufacturer is somehow lying to us. For example, with the color temperature and also a bit with the light output. And it's not too much of a difference, but still it's it's, uh, you have to take it with a grain of salt. The fan noise is horrible. As I mentioned before, we can switch it out and we will, and then it's not too bad anymore, but still this is somewhat of an issue for many things. But what really is great about this light is the flickering because it, for me, it's virtually impossible to get this light to flicker, which is a really awesome thing. So basically in the end this light is a great foundation for tinkering around because you can switch out the fan but you could also switch out the LED. There's a company called Yuji or Yuji, I have no idea how it's actually spelled and they're from China and they produce these really 
great high CRI um, LED emitters that you can buy for relatively cheap. I think for a 50 watt one, it's around $50. So basically you could also switch out the LED and then have a really great light, a very portable one and also one that works with batteries. And this is not um, often that you can do this. But when you buy it stock and you don't want to modify it in any way, this light is maybe not the best to get and the Godox will make the best red picture. I'm not yet sure if I will keep this light because many things draw me away from it, but still the flicker thing is where the Godox was really unusable because it did not make it usable in many conditions and you could not really use the dimmer without introducing flicker. And this is something where this light is really great. However, for the long run, um, if you have to switch out everything, for me this is no issue, but for many this might be. So uh, yeah, it could be um, a better lamp. So take this all with a grain of salt. I don't know if you will might uh, find much more use with this lamp. It's a good lamp, but it's not perfect. It has its issues. Um, still a good budget solution, no doubt about that. So thank you so much for watching now. I hope this was helpful and we will um, have a second video for this lamp regarding the switch of the fan inside. And yeah, hope to see you next time and uh, bye.